Communication is a crucial part of everyday life. We seek to persuade or make ourselves understood countless times every day. But what's going on when we do? How do communication and persuasion work? You may not think about it, but before you even open your mouth to speak, you are already communicating. What we wear, what we look like, even what we sound like, everything communicates something about us to other people. But it's not always what you think. Perception. You may have heard that first impressions are everything, but it's no exaggeration. Think about the first time you met your boss. Most people tend to group traits together. This means that if you notice that your boss is well dressed, you may have also assumed that she is competent or intelligent just because she is well dressed. The same goes for negative traits. If on your first day at work your boss had come in flustered and an hour late, you may have thought that she is disorganized or even lazy. One of the most important parts of perception in communication is establishing credibility with your audience. When you are perceived as a credible source, people tend to believe the things you say. When a speaker first gets up to speak at a conference, we only know a few things: what they look like, the topic of their talk, and maybe some small amount of biographical data from the conference brochure. During the talk, the speaker can gain credibility by giving a compelling speech and also by sharing his credentials with his audience. If he does a good job establishing his credibility, he has a much better chance at persuading his audience. Persuasion is any message that intends to shape or change the response of others, either in their thoughts, attitude, or behavior. Persuasive techniques largely fall into two camps: rational or emotional appeals. A rational appeal uses logical arguments and factual evidence, whereas an emotional appeal is designed to arouse feelings, usually of fear or guilt. Persuasion doesn't always work, of course. If a message is perceived as overtly trying to persuade, or if it conflicts with some deeper truth, many will reject it. People can also be inoculated against certain messages by supplying them with counterarguments before hearing the persuasive message. Communication is complicated already, but it gets even more complicated when we communicate across cultures. Coming from different backgrounds often means that what you say is not what the other person is going to hear. But don't be deterred by the possibility of being misunderstood. The best advice for cross-cultural communication is simple: pay attention to how your words are being heard, and give everyone some room for error. Getting better at communication is probably the best investment anyone can make, because ultimately there is no more powerful force. Than someone who can persuade and influence people.